Hi guys, this week I'm going to talk about Lancelot. Now, Lancelot was, is one of the figures in the tales of King Arthur. He was said to have been one of Arthur's most powerful knights. But was he real? Well, according to the vast majority of sources, no, he wasn't real. And the reason for saying that is because he first appears in the late 12th century uh, in a record or, or a tale written by Cretian. But is that uh, a good basis for saying that he wasn't real? Just because he first appears in the late 12th century, he doesn't appear, he doesn't appear in any previous record. Is that a good basis for saying that he wasn't real? Well, although that might sound quite convincing, there's actually a serious flaw in this logic. The flaw is the fundamental fact that Lancelot is almost certainly not a name. You see, in some manuscripts of, of Cretian's tale, uh, The Knight of the Cart, which is the tale in which Lancelot first appears, we find the name Lancelot written L apostrophe Ancelot, as if it's, it's, it's representing the French definite article L, and then the word Ancelot. Now, Ancelot is a, an old French word. It means servant. So this, this uh, L apostrophe Ancelot represents the servant. So it's a title, a French title. It would be quite a coincidence if it was just a name that, that just so happened to match Le Ancelot, the servant. It would be quite a coincidence uh, if it were not actually the title. So almost certainly it is a French title meaning the servant, not a name. So would we expect, even if he was real, let's suppose he was real, would we expect this character to appear in non-French sources under a French title, at least prior to French sources popularising the, the title? No, we wouldn't. So the fact that he first appears with this French title in the late 12th century, in one of the first French tales of King Arthur, is not surprising, or it shouldn't be surprising. It's exactly what we would expect. Obviously, obviously Lancelot first appears with a French title in a French record. So in the, the tales of King Arthur before the French started writing about King Arthur, obviously, if Lancelot was based on a real figure, that figure is not going to be recorded under a French title, is he? So the question is, does a, a character who matches the profile, that the character profile of Lancelot appear in earlier sources? That's the question. Can we identify Lancelot, not under that name, but, but can we identify the character in earlier records? Now, in my opinion, the answer to this is yes, definitely. So let, let's consider who was Lancelot, what do we know about him? Or what do the records, the, the legends claim about him? Well, supposedly he was one of Arthur's most powerful knights, serving Arthur away from his own land. And he was said to have helped restore order to Britain after Arthur's death. But then after a while, he decided to retire to become a monk. So that's that's the basic profile of Arthur. Oh, also, this is very important. He, despite being an ally of Arthur, he did end up fighting a war against him over Guinevere. He also was said to have had a an illegitimate son, Galahad, who was nonetheless known, renowned, in fact, for his virtue. So that's the basic character profile of Lancelot. Now, is there a figure from sixth century Britain? according to historical records, who matches that profile? Well, yes. One of Arthur's most powerful allied kings, because that's what the Knights of the Round Table really were. I mean, knight, obviously, is an anachronistic term, but if you follow the sources back, you'll see that these Knights of the Round Table are merely allied kings who, who, who worked with Arthur, who were led by Arthur, and we find that description in the earliest Arthurian record, the Historia Britannum, where Arthur is portrayed as leading the kings of Britain against the Saxons. So, so that's what the knights, the knights of the Round Table in the later medieval romances really were. 
So if Lancelot was one of the most powerful of Arthur's knights, then what we're looking for is a powerful king in Britain in the 6th century who is alleged to have been an ally of Arthur. Now, one of the most powerful kings, considered by some to even be potentially as powerful as Arthur himself, was Melgan Gwyneth. Now, he was the king of the north of Wales, well, the northwest in particular, of a territory called Gwyneth. And uh, we know he was historical because he's mentioned by the, uh, the only contemporary source from 6th century Britain that we have, Gildas. Uh, and he describes him as being an extremely powerful king. Now, according to the Welsh triads, Melgan Gwyneth was the elder of one of Arthur's, or at one of Arthur's courts. Though not a court in Gwyneth, it was actually a court in South Wales. So that matches the, the basic idea of this powerful leader serving Arthur away from his own land. So, so that's, that's one basic element. But now also, what about the idea that he had this, this illegitimate son who was nonetheless re renowned for his virtue? Well, in the case of, uh, of Lancelot, that was Galahad. In the case of Melgan Gwyneth, he is recorded as having had an illegitimate son known as Reen. Now, Reen turns up in the Welsh triads as one of the three fair princes of the Isle of Britain. So, once again, we find this illegitimate son who is renowned for his virtue, one of the three fair princes of the Isle of Britain. So, so that matches as well. And, and I'd, I'd even argue that, that the wife, or mistress, rather, of Melgan, who, who um, gave birth to Reen, actually is the same character and has the same father as the mistress of Lancelot in the medieval tales, but that's a subject for another video. But in any case, we find that, that same thing there, an illegitimate son who's renowned for his virtue. Now, what about the idea of Lancelot fighting a war against Arthur? Do we find that in historical records of Melgan? Well, um, what we find is there are records, such as the, the life of St. Cadoc, uh, of Melgan fighting a war, or at least leading a raiding party down into South East Wales, where he then kidnapped a woman who was one of the daughters, or, or who was a daughter of one of the chieftains of that land. Now, Arthur, according to, to all the best evidence, was centred in the southeast of Wales. After all, that's where Caerleon is, which is said to have been one of Arthur's main courts. So, this this record of Melgan leading a raiding party into the south of Wales, southeast, where Arthur is placed, according to most of the evidence, and and kidnapping a, a woman and running off with her, that matches very well with the later medieval tales of Lancelot fighting a war against Arthur and running off with Guinevere. So obviously not all of those details are there. That The record about Melgan doesn't specify Arthur, doesn't mention Arthur, nor does it really give details about who this woman was. But nonetheless, the, the fundamental uh, key elements are there, and this could easily have led to that tale, that legend of Lancelot fighting a war against Arthur and running off with his wife. So in that sense as well, that matches Melgan. Now, what about Melgan restoring, or rather Lancelot restoring order to Britain after Arthur's death? Well, according to many records, uh, Melgan Gwyneth, was one of the High Kings, or possibly the High King, of Britain after Arthur's death. So, obviously, he would have done his best to restore order at that time. So that matches as well. That places him in a leading role, just like Lancelot was in a leading role, in restoring order to Britain after Arthur's death. Now, what about the, the concept of Lancelot retiring to become a monk? Well, uh, that is also matched by details of, of Melgan Gwyneth. Melgan, uh, according to Gildas, so this is a definite historical detail about Melgan, after being king for a while, he, he decided to step down from the throne and become a, a monk. So that matches as well. Though the difference is that uh, Melgan evidently returned to, to the throne because he has that position when Gildas was talking to him about the fact that in the past he'd stepped down from the throne to become a monk. So that detail is different. However, there are records of Melgan 
dying in a church, physically in a church. So that could potentially lead, there could potentially be some confusion there where someone, like maybe a scribe, would see records of Milgan stepping down to become a monk and then they see records of him dying in a church and they just assume that he continued in the church from the moment he stepped down from the throne until his death. That would be quite logical. Um, so in any case, that's, that's quite a close match to what we read about uh, in the Tales of Lancelot. So those are the fundamental um, features between Lancelot and Melg and Gwyneth that indicate that they are in fact the same person. So we have, they were both a very powerful ally of Arthur's. They both served him away from their own land. They both um, had an illegitimate son who, who was renowned for his virtue. They both fought a war against Arthur or Arthur's territory involving seizing a woman. They also both helped to restore order. They had leading positions in restoring order to Britain after Arthur's death, and they both were said to have then stepped down from their leading positions to become monks as well. So those are the, uh, the fundamental similarities between Melg and Gwyneth, the historical powerful king of North Wales, and Lancelot. There's also a very uh, telling detail regarding the name of Lancelot's kingdom, but I'll explain that in the description because I don't want to make a big mess of all the, the names and things like that. So I'll explain that in the description as well, but that also indicates that, that Lancelot was Melgan due to the fact that Lancelot's kingdom, the name of his kingdom, is very probably, uh, or very probably comes from the name Gwyneth. So that indicates that their kingdoms were the same, indicating that they themselves were the same. Um, so yeah, that is all the information which uh, I'd like to share about Lancelot and Melgan Gwyneth. So hopefully you found it interesting. If you have any other ideas about who Lancelot may have been based on, if you, if you have any alternative theories, then please feel free to share them in the comments. Until next time, bye-bye.